Hey there, Yuri is here and welcome to Community Life. Here we talk with the amazing humans from the community world about their life journeys and learn from each other. And today we have a conversation with Laura Zag, a community strategist with a passion for starting meaningful movements and an intentionally optimistic natural connector with insatiably curious mind and super energetic person. Totally, definitely. So hello, Laura. Hi, Yuri. I'm thrilled to be here. Finally, here we are talking about you. I'm so happy. And the first question. So you are speaking French. And what do you love the most about this language? Oh, about the language itself? Yeah. Um, well, I originally just thought it was a pretty language. <laughs> and I signed up. And, um, but what I especially love are the connections it's made possible. I lived with a family in France in high school and my French now is terrible and I have to rely on Google translate, but I'm still in touch with that same family. And I'm actually going this summer to the wedding of the daughter who was my age. So, um, yeah, we've been friends so many, now it's decades. Wow. Wow. I wonder why did you go on that exchange program at 14? Mm. So I was in boarding school and it was an option to go spend one year abroad. And I applied and I didn't even ask my parents. I, I remember when we were in chapel at Christmas and they were there visiting and they announced my name in chapel as winning. <laughs> and my parents were... um, so that was a little bit shocking for, but, but my mom was excited. But when I was growing up, my dad was in the army reserves and part of the officers club. And one of the things that my parents were very interested in was hosting people from other countries. Mm. And um, I was probably like four to eight and we would have these people in our home and a lot of them there was a lot of cooking they would share their meals from where they were from and i just remember having grown up with this appreciation for other cultures and i'd never left the country i was um 14 i guess when i went to france and that was my first time out of the country and yeah i loved it it's still crazy, you know, going somewhere at 14. How, how did you feel? Um, I, excited. You know, there's a bunch of um, research on what it's like to go to another country. You sort of go through this honeymoon phase where everything is very um, amazing and fabulous and you love everything. Then you go through, I don't know what the name of it is, but it, it feels like a very lonely phase where you can't mm. articulate your um, deeper feelings because you just don't have the language. And this was a time before, you know, any social media, before texting, any of those things. So, um, yeah, there was sort of a loneliness phase. And then you get to the point where after a few months of being immersed in another country, you can speak the language fluently and you're dreaming in that in that language and the friendships that blossomed from that. Um, yeah, it was pretty incredible. Yeah. You know, when, when I was, when I was a kid, we had this kind of work and travel. Oh, oh, and we also had some kind of exchange program. I feel like it was like with folks from the UK or with folks from the U S and I feel like I was always asking my parents to do some kind of that and they were like no 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 way no way no way. yeah and i and i was like ah okay oh okay. i was encouraging my kids like my older son i i encouraged him and i'm still encouraging him to go do a year abroad i did another year abroad in college and did some internships in europe so yeah my husband and i had our first date in thailand we love to travel <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing and Coming back to France, so what was the first memory of meeting your French family? Oh, meeting them? I, I don't even really remember, but I think 
that what happened is I was picked up by them and there was some kind of reception and we're all jet lagged and you know, going, it, it's very fuzzy, Yuri. I don't know that I have a great memory of meeting them for the first time. I was tired and um, probably just unsure of what to anticipate. I don't know. I'm making this up because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's interesting how human brains work. And uh, sometimes I heard this uh, research that uh, some memories that we have like from an early childhood. It's something like that parents told us or somebody told us and some people don't even sure if there are their own memories. So we can kind of like, oh, I remember and like describe everything in details. But then, no, it's it's not a, how it exactly was. So yeah, I, I totally get what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so recently, and I, I, I'm going to get his name wrong, but I think it's James Garrett was hosted through the Community Leaders Institute, CLI. Mm -hmm. It's talking about this newer research about memory and how you know there's so much trauma also linked with memory, but you can go back and visit, revisit a memory as a way to heal from some of that early trauma. So mm -hmm. I think what you're saying is definitely supported by research that our memory isn't all necessarily true <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but you know as as long as we are believing in it and as long we are like 100 percent sure and talking to people about that uh it's kind of like sounds like fake it till you make, and not really fake it till you make it but very soon okay so you told a little bit about your parents and let's start from the beginning tell me more about them who are they who are my parents? Okay, my dad is just like the nicest man ever to walk on the face of the earth. But well, you're nice too, but he's <laughs> just very um, happy-go-lucky and he can fix everything and he loves people. And he's always kind of someone in the background a little bit, but super supportive and just, just a good dad. Like he's just a good dad. Um, my mom is very, um, she's kind of like loves a party, loves to entertain, <laughs> loves to sort of be like on, like at the center of things. Um, she also, she loves to read. She loves to bring people together. She's been a great grandmother to my two kids and yeah, the super she ran this program when I was, I guess, in like high school and college called Sister Cities. And she was uh, connecting people from all over the world with cities in Charlotte, North Carolina. And for her, that was really kind wow. of like a career. She had been a teacher and would she refused to let me to go to school to be a teacher. I thought I also wanted to be a teacher. And I was told that um, she would not pay for my education. No, I think she was kidding, but... <laughs> She wanted me to do something else. Um, so, yeah. Why? I think she personally felt that teaching was maybe not what she wanted to do, but given her, like when she was coming through school, there weren't that many options for women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think she just wanted me to think more broadly. So, about options. But I would have been a great <laughs> I wonder if it's your mom who made you this great connector. I I think it's a combination. Hmm. hmm. I combination? think my, Yeah. I think my mom has this ability to um bring people together, the energy side of things. And I think it's my dad who holds space for other people. And so I think it's a combination. Hmm. It's interesting. Tell me more about that. Like, like in my perspective, when I'm thinking about, you know, gathering people, entertaining them, it's like usually the same person. And it sounds like they were a great team. And tell me more about 
let's say what your dad did in this uh, people gatherings. I think he was just he's just very someone who's going to step aside. He you might not even notice the hat, right? Like he's not there to be about himself. He's just like quietly sitting enjoying the moment, making sure everyone's happy and he's totally happy go lucky like a big teddy bear. <laughs> wow. I yeah. It's so nice, you know, it's so nice to have this person growing up and somebody who cheers for you, who supports you, who always like yeah, I you know, it's kind of weird to say always on the background, but you know, I feel like everyone needs to have somebody on the background and uh, you were having you have this phrase that you are always talking about never struggle alone oh. and uh, i wonder what made you feel and act that way mm, such a good question so i um are we have two boys and our younger son has a pretty serious medical condition and I spent years here. I'm in my kitchen right now. I spent years in this kitchen hmm. just um, trying to take care of him and not like I couldn't go out into the local community and find people who really understood what it was like. And then I, um, one of our gastroenterologists at Duke said, you know, Laura, you should go to this conference in Arizona for gastroenterologists and therapists and um, dietitians, you really should go to this thing. And I'm like, okay, I, I, there, I would do anything for my kid. So I said, great, I'm going to go. And I went and there were, I don't know how many people there, but maybe 10 parents. Mm. It was primarily um, practitioners, but I was in a room and the founder of the organization, it's called Feeding Matters. And Shannon got up and shared her story. And I was in the audience, like, I mean, audience, right? I'm in there with 50 people who were, um, but I started just like, I couldn't control the tears because I thought, oh my gosh, there's another human who understands what I've been going through for the past three years. And I just realized how valuable that connection was. And we, um, obviously I introduced myself to her and like we hung out and then we sat on her bed in her hotel room in our pajamas until like three o'clock in the morning. And we've been really good friends, um, ever since. And I think that feeling of having had pockets of time when, when I felt alone, but I wasn't really alone. Um, because there were other people experiencing very similar journeys, but I didn't have a way to connect with them. So in France, when I didn't have the language and in my kitchen, when I was navigating this really tricky journey, um, and I think that's one of the things I really appreciate about community mm -hmm. helps create this fabric and these, these connections for people to recognize you don't have to suffer alone and struggle alone. There are people who care and people who can relate, even if they're not outside your door or in your neighborhood. There, it's just a matter of connecting with them and finding finding the way to them. I feel like it's super hard to really connect with those people because if if I'm understanding it correctly, like she shared her story and she was very vulnerable in this moment. And that's exactly how you connect. And uh, I believe not that many people are sharing their stories so openly because mostly, you know, I, I feel like human humans mostly keep everything inside and uh, they are opening up only if they see somebody or if they hear some kind of story. And, uh, and talking about you, so basically... You connected after hearing the story. So after that, did you become more vulnerable? 
that I become more vulnerable. I feel like actually I became more powerful hmm. because I didn't feel like I felt empowered to share my voice and how much, and I, I saw what Shannon had created with her vision and I feel like it was a huge turning point for um, my son's journey for sure, because all of a sudden now I was connected with the top research, the top people in the field. And I was able to get treatment for him that I would not have even known about. Um, so yeah, and I really share with my clients because they're also hesitant to share their stories. And I say, imperfection connects and perfection disconnects mm. and that was something that was told to me by a fabulous woman in bangkok named sonali ventrusery follow her she's great but um there's a desire to try to be so perfect but that actually separates you from people no one wants to be friends with someone who's perfect or have a mentor who's so um, you're going to ask me about the lights, Yuri. I just know it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> the, the perfection is, is that it can block the connection. And when people are real, it puts people at ease. You know, I didn't truly really think to ask about lights, but since <laughs> we are here. So before we started this conversation, Laura was like, I don't know, changing lights like five times to find the best lighting. So we still don't have the best lighting. Which still seems it's it's good, good, you know, and like <laughs> amazing Christmas tree behind you and like all all this all the background looks like you are just using some kind of virtual background, which oh, is that's like, real. <laughs> yeah, such amazing. And uh so <laughs> Tell me about you not being a perfectionist. <laughs> okay, so I am a recovering perfectionist, okay? Uh, yes, okay, got it. Yes. yes, and in this kitchen, about a week ago, my husband, he's really nice, but he said to me something about, he's like, we were talking about being good enough. And he he just looked at me, he said, that's not a skill that you have. <laughs> <laughs> I was so offended, but, um, he, he might be kind of right, but I try and I try not to be like, I don't, I don't want to be perfect in the way I interact with people, but mm. I, I do like things to be a certain way. Got it. I wonder, it's like, there are a lot of plates behind you. Do you mm. ever use them for cooking? Uh, no, but I, also <laughs> use, I don't use those particular plates, but like some of them are parts of sets. So sometimes I, Yuri, I got a little burned out on cooking because mm. my son was on a feeding tube for yeah. a very, like over a decade yeah. and cooking became like not so much fun. So I'm, I'm in a season of like restoring of an appreciation for cooking. <laughs> so yeah, those plates have been there for a long time. And actually the whole wall, I'm getting ready to tear out the whole wall. So there won't even be room for plates anymore. And uh, how is your son now? He's great. He's, um, he is small, but mighty and fun and feisty. And hilarious. <laughs> and a budding musician and a comedian <laughs> and talented and incredible. He's incredible. <laughs> and also, he there's not anything. He, he was struggling. He went to middle school this year and was struggling with some nerves that you know any child would about going to middle school and just normal things. And 
I reminded him of all that we had accomplished together and all the things that we had endured. I, I've been with him all over this country and to amazing hospitals and everything you can dream. And by the end of the conversation, we were like, we could do fifth grade. Like, I think we have got, I think we've got fifth grade in the bag because, <laughs> and, and he goes through life with that same mentality of he's sort of the can't stop, won't stop kid, which is hard to parent. He's, he's feisty, but when he sets his mind to doing something, he's unstoppable. Do you usually keep emotions inside? Do I can't. Well, in our family, we, I say my kids are just going to tell you everything. Yuri, I don't think they're ever going to listen to this, honestly. So I'll just tell you, but I call <laughs> them fire and ice. Um, cause I've got the one son who's like super passionate and he's a fire. And then I have my other son who's like calm, cool, and collected. And he, so, I mean, he's not icy, but it's just what I call him. So I think my husband and I are divided smack down the middle like that. So I'm on the fiery side and my husband is on the icy side. So, um, not icy that feels so mean, but you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I understand. Totally. Cool. 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 Yeah. 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 And then Teddy and I are a little feisty. Got it. And you know, I just, even having this conversation via zoom, I still feel, and I see that you are such an energetic person. And I wonder what energizes and motivates you. People too, hmm. and friendships and relationships and serving and um, new ideas. And I, I am very energetic. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of bounce out of the bed in the morning, like excited for the new day. And, um, yeah, that, that is definitely true until it turns to night. And then I go, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you run out of energy? How do you restore it? Um, I, for me, exercise, like I really love um, just going for a walk in my neighborhood with a dog, with my friends, with myself. I love Pilates. Um, this whole season, this lead up to Christmas, I'm really trying to intentionally slow down. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, I have to go and proactively like carve out times on my calendar to slow down or I will just keep speeding through. So at, in November, I scheduled a massage. I scheduled acupuncture. I scheduled candlelight Pilates. I scheduled all of these things that are on, at a slower pace <laughs> as almost like a discipline. And there's um, someone amazing. I do not know him at all, but I love what he says. His name is Christian Fleck mm -hmm. and he has a community that I think he's just starting called the Slowdown Club. And I am so inspired by him. He's in Vienna, Austria. Um, any community builder listening to this needs to take his onboarding because it is incredible. And yeah, I, I, I have to try, Yuri, to slow down because it is not my nature. Are you are you uh, recovering? Uh, very like uh, slow. Uh, how 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 to say? It? So I yeah. Does it really work for you to slow down? No, I'm not good at it at all. I used <laughs> to um, challenge myself to run more miles each week than I um, drove. <laughs> so I used to run a lot. I have a heart condition called POTS, so I'm not supposed to do tons of cardio. So that, mm -hmm. but I normally have to, I have to put outside pressure to like slow things down. It's not my natural speed. <laughs> what do you love the most about Pilates? What do I love about Pilates? Um, well, I love the fact that I love to go in person to the studio for a couple of reasons. One is 
those reformer machines feel like magic in your body. Like they're just incredible. I love the feeling with the physical feeling of that, but it's also a studio with a lot of dancers from mm -hmm. local ballet, like the North Carolina ballet and the connection that I have there. I mean, the classes are like five people. So getting, it, it feels like a complete luxury for me when I go to go hang out with them and use the reformer. And I don't know, it feels, it feels luxurious. You're always talking about connections. So am I understanding it correctly that if you are coming to a new place, you are the first person who always creates new connections right away? Well, maybe. <laughs> Although I will say, I have to give a shout out to Jenny Weigel because I went to CMX for the very first time this year. And normally I am the person who's like, oh, you should know this person and we should go do this. Jenny does that job so perfectly that I'm like, this is fabulous. I can just receive <laughs> this. And I can just be the follower. So, but normally, yes, I am gathering people from all kinds of crazy corners and bringing them together. I love to do that. What amount of serendipity do you allow in your life? Okay, so why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm curious. I think one thing that I try to practice is noticing. And for me, I will really work hard to like resist the temptation when, especially if I'm alone or waiting to pull out my phone mm -hmm. and instead just be present and notice, which sometimes is, is really hard. You have to kind of fight against this urge to just pull out your phone. This morning I was at the post office in line mailing Christmas presents and I knew we had this recording and I have a big long Asana list of things that I'm supposed to be doing. And the line of the post office was very long and it was, it took a lot of self-control not to whip out my phone. And at some point, like I'm going to have a conversation with someone in the space, but this nice girl was in front of me and we started chatting and she's a student at the local university and she wants to be a museum educator. And before you knew it there, we were striking up a conversation and had she been there three minutes longer, I, I'm sure I would have introduced her to someone and <laughs> um, brought her over to make Christmas cookies. Who knows what would have happened, but she would have, she, her life would have been changed. She would have been scooped up. How did your conversation start? How did the conversation start? Um, well, I was kind of obsessing about the packages and wanting them to look very pretty and nice. And she was, she complimented the packages and she said, Oh, those look so cheerful. <laughs> and so we started this conversation. I said, Oh, well, therefore, um, some clients of mine. And then she started asking what I do. And anyway, that's how it started. Which means that being a recovering per perfectionist is not that bad. Maybe. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't, yeah, maybe. Sometimes. Are you, <laughs> are you an early bird? Yes. <laughs> I, I think the last time I slept past 5.30? I, I don't even remember. Maybe this summer. I get up super early, Yuri. Sometimes before 4 o'clock. And when your family get up? As late as they can possibly sleep. <laughs> um, on a school day, I try to get them up by 7. Mm -hmm. But on the weekend, they would sleep as late as I would let them. And, and you know, I don't normally disturb them. My so my teacher slept through his exam last year, and it was like at 2 in the afternoon or something. <laughs> so what do you usually do from 4 till, let's say, 7? I have coffee is the first thing. 
<laughs> and I get my dog. I have a journal. So I do like some quiet journaling and reading in the morning. And I do a ton of work. That's when my brain, if I have like deeper work to think about or writing, I love to do that when it's calm and quiet. Um, people get, I don't, I hate email. I don't do a ton of email, but if you get an email from me, chances are it's written between four and six in the morning, <laughs> um, possibly like a week after you sent it. But um, that's, that's what I do in the morning is like things that I really want to focus on. And then I transition to mom mode and I get <laughs> breakfast and pack lunches and drive to school and walk the dog and exercise and then I come back and work later yeah I feel like close to afternoon you've already done a ton of stuff so <laughs> it's like yeah I can imagine and talking about your dog how did you meet him her ah. your Kavapoo my Kavapoo so we were taking our son to Boston Children's Hospital And we were going up like every 90 days. We we live in North Carolina. So you know, we were traveling from out of state. And the hospital has a program called Paw Prince. I think that's the name of it. But there are 32 therapy dogs in that children's hospital. Hmm. And they're not all there at all at the same time. So that would be a little crazy. But <laughs> you could go and hang out with the dogs. And we noticed that our son you know, he, he had to have anesthesia. And when he would wake up from that, sometimes it would be um, less than wonderful. But we would go hang out with the dogs and we just saw this way where he was relaxed and calm. And I said to the, um, so he has a GI issue mm -hmm. and there's all this science about the brain and the gut and how interact, how the brain and gut are so connected. And I was working really hard at um, understanding a lot of neuroscience and trying to help with the brain side of things, hoping that that would also calm the gut. So I said to his physician, Dr. Rachel Rosen, who's incredible, um, Dr. Rosen, should I, should we get a dog? And she said to me, well, she whips out her prescription pad and she's like, get a dog. <laughs> great doctor <laughs> he's incredible so i'm like okay the doctor said to get a dog i'm gonna get a dog <laughs> so we started researching for we meaning me started researching <laughs> breeds and i knew we wanted a dog that didn't shed i knew we wanted a dog that um was hypoallergenic and i knew we wanted like a smart dog that was trainable like all the things so and i had a cockapoo when i was growing up named Munchkin. So I had this, I kind of knew in my head what this ideal dog would look like. And one day I was like searching breeders. I mean, I was doing a lot of research, but I found one and he was about two hours away. And my kids were upstairs on video games or something. And I said, Hey guys, um, would you like to get in the car and go meet this dog? And they were like, no. <laughs> And I was like, what? And I said, no, I, I really, I think we should go and we should go, um, go see this dog. And I, I finally convinced them to get in the car and we made this day trip and we met at this litter of puppies and we took a, um, we took a trainer with us there and the trainer helped us pick the dog and then she took him home with her, mm. but that's, that's how we met our dog. Salem. Why did trainer take a dog with her? Oh, well, because, um, so at that season, my son was, we were still doing a lot of traveling for his mm -hmm. medical stuff and therapy. And he was on a feeding tube and mm. I was making the food for the feeding tube and up at night monitoring the tube And I knew in, like, I knew I had very limited capacity to take on, um, like, a, a, I had never had a dog as an adult. Yeah. So 
um, that was the concern, but also we weren't sure if we wanted him to be like an actual service dog. So we, um, we thought, well, we need a trainer. So she kept him for a month and he was basically trained by other dogs and this professional trainer. And then we got him. Oh, and we were going to have to be out of town again for a hospital visit for like two weeks. So she, he went and got, it was the best decision we ever made because now he loves dogs, loves people. And yeah. Got it. How do you feel about New Year's resolutions? New Year's resolutions. I kind of like them. I, 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 um, I always make New Year's resolutions, but I make like quarterly goals as well. Probably one of my favorite New Year's resolutions was, um, to learn how to ballroom dance when I was maybe, I don't know, 20, 25, 25. And I lived in this condominium. We were with all these single people. It was kind of like the TV show Friends. I mean, really, it was pretty much that. And it was October, and I had done nothing on this goal of, like, learning how to ballroom dance. So I got my neighbors from the building, and I said, okay, guys, we have to go sign up for these lessons. <laughs> and we're going to learn because this is my New Year's resolution, and it's October. We got to get on this. <laughs> and... We did it for like, I don't know, maybe six or eight months. And it was so fun. So I, I love New Year's resolutions. Do you have some kind of resolutions that you made in the beginning of 2023 and didn't act on it yet? Oh. Um, well... Not really, but I have one that I made in 2022 that I purposely did not continue, which was um, I decided I was no longer going to be a spectator, that I was going to participate. Mm -hmm. So for an entire year, like if my kids were um, ice skating, I had to actually like get the ice skates on and ice skate with them. And I just decided one year of that was plenty. So I did not, <laughs> did not pick that up again in 2023. So in what activities did you participate during 2022 with your kids for sure? Well, um, the biggest one that comes to mind is the ice skating because like that is just not my, I'm just not good at that. And it's way out of my comfort zone and I was sure I was going to break something. Yeah. So no. And did you I break I, something? No, I did not. It was very, very safe. <laughs> Because, because you told me that you were sure that you... Oh, okay. No, but, sure, but I, I didn't. I didn't. I was, yeah. <laughs> Once you shared a message, take a moment to pause and thank one person who makes day-to-day -day life sunnier and happier. So I wonder, who do you thank right now and why? Okay. I am going to thank Taylor Harrington. Um. Why do I think she, I think she's incredible. She's like the little sister I wish I had. Like, I would love to just scoop her up. Um, I think the way she's brought together the group community and people all across the globe who have really not too much in common and the way she just shows up and she's always so happy and cheerful and, but also transparent, um, I, I love her. I think she's incredible. So I'm going to think I'm going to shout her out today. By the way, I still remember that when we had this conversation with Taylor, she came up with this uh, words, friend flirting, which I still use. Like we are friend flirting on LinkedIn. We are friend flirting on Slack. And finally we had this conversation. So yes, definitely a shout out to Taylor. She's just smart and kind and fun. And I, I don't know, I just think she's great. Yeah, totally agree. And what can make you surprised? Ooh, what can make me surprised? Um, I don't know. Maybe when people don't, behave or act the way that it feels so natural to me. Mm -hmm. I've, 
I'm just surprised. I, I assume that ever, like, what do you mean they're not kind? What do you, what do you, what do you mean? Like, I just can't believe it. Um, so that I find I'm sometimes surprised by the way people react in a certain moment. And what about kind of like positive surprises? Um, well, Yuri, I'm the mom, right? So I'm the one who plans the surprises. <laughs> okay, got it. To be honest, um, positive surprises. Yeah, no, that's I, that is like I think I, that's in my job description. <laughs> okay, so what was one? positive surprise you will always remember about okay so last let's see what year was this 2021 maybe whenever the kids were approved for their vaccinations for covid um i did the math i got my kiddo vaccinated we were really worried for him because of his medical stuff and i got him vaccinated and planned a trip to take him to new york city hmm. because for so long, we had to be really careful with him. And he saw his older brother who had the vaccine, like able to go and do things. And it just, I was ready to like get him out of the bubble. And he woke up on a Friday morning and he says, Mah, I just, I do not want to go to school today. And I, you know, normally I'm like, buck up, buck up, we're off to school. Um, but I said, okay, well, you know what? That's okay. Cause you're not going to go to school. And he looked at me kind of wide eyed, like, what do you mean? I said, well, we're actually going to the airport. <laughs> and um, yeah, I took him to just me, just the two of us to New York for like a three day weekend. And we went to a Broadway show and FAO Schwartz and all, all the things with all the crowds. <laughs> And that once, was a positive once again, it was your job to bring a surprise. But what about you getting a surprise? Getting a surprise. Well, I have, um, I was on a podcast <laughs> and um, I, I don't get a lot of surprises, Yuri, but I thought it was really sweet. This was um, Kelsey and Mal from the week of the website. Mm -hmm. And I was just working at my desk and my husband answered the mail and brought the mail to me. And there was a card and I thought, oh, well, that is interesting. I don't ever get cards. And I opened it up and they had written the nicest note and sent me a Starbucks card. And I just felt like, wow, that, that, was, a, that was a lovely surprise just to be recognized for doing something so ordinary so. did you already use it no <laughs> okay so yuri i left i have been to starbucks because i took a friend a drink but it is sitting in my desk drawer and i i, I need to like physically move it to my wallet yes it's the hardest so part. Not I... but i will <laughs> use this <laughs> Once you shared uh, this story about your son uh, going to an amazing summer camp and you really love this summer camp and he loves his summer camp. So I wonder what does your son love the most about this camp? Man, I want to go get that thing that's right over there. Um, they know the kids and they, they care about the kids so much. So just yesterday, um, he got a care package in the mail from the camp for Christmas wow. with a little Frisbee um, saying how much they're excited for him to be back this summer. And just the the care they give to each child and the attention. They put my son in a cabin with a counselor who had a sister or a family member who had also been on a feeding tube mm -hmm. and like I just really appreciate this camp that's um caring about the children from their their minds and their hearts and their souls and like every everything about that experience just feels magical and he takes his you know he's he's very musical so he took his guitar and when we pick him up 
his whole cabin and all the counselors are like shouting his name. And I'm like, I, it just makes you feel so good as a mom um, that he has this experience. There are no phones in the entire camp. Mm. And it's just, it's just magical. So yeah, I love it. I can't imagine, you know, from my, from my perspective, just this phrase, no phones in the camp. It's, it's already a magical experience. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you have phones with you, nope, it won't work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so my teenager, we sent him to Outward Bound right after COVID. And we said, okay, you have been doing high school in your bedroom. This is ridiculous. And I mean, we had to, right? Because that's the safe yeah. choice. That's not normal that a teenager is experiencing that season of life from their bedroom. So we wanted to give him a summer where he could really go out and explore. So we sent him to Outward Bound and it was in another state. He had to fly there and <laughs> someone in a, this seems so funny you would say it, someone in a white van picked him up and they take his phone and I didn't hear from him for two weeks wow. until, um, well, he doesn't know this, but he purchased some, he didn't call his mom when he got his phone. That's not how I knew he was back and alive and well. He purchased some candy and I got the alert on the debit card that someone at the airport had purchased something. And I knew, okay, he is safe. But yeah, they took his phone for two weeks and he was hiked like backpacking through the woods. So it still was planned, yes? <laughs> planned, but, um, you know, they had slept outside, no tents, through thunderstorms, had to carry everything with them. But he came back so mature and it was such a good experience. Yeah, I can imagine. And how did you feel when moving your son into his college apartment? Yuri, I called a girlfriend and I said, you did not tell me this. You did not tell me that these apartments are so gross. <laughs> and she, oh yeah, I didn't. I, I was not a fan of moving him, in, but I mean, I'm happy for him, but yeah, it, I think he's, he's fine. He's, he's not loving where he is and where he's living this year. So that is my big hope for Christmas is that he has a fantastic living situation next year, <laughs> but dropping him off. I thought, oh, I took a lot of pictures and sent them to the office. And I said, is this, is this normal? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> what did they answer? Um, they maybe agreed that may, they might need to go in there and do a little cleaning. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Totally get it. Yeah. Who are the people you can tell everything to? Oh, um, I have two. Well, I have a lot of amazing friends, but my friend Betty and my friend Bunny, um, I tell them, anything and we, we we go on walks and my friend Bunny and I recently went on a two and a half hour walk <laughs> yeah sounds, so I don't sounds, see them sounds, all the time but yeah sounds like but, a good walk yeah yeah her son was a little worried <laughs> so it's it, it's now it's now like uh switching chairs it's not like parents worrying about their children it's like children worrying about their parents yeah. okay her, got it her got husband it. said Locke was like, he said, mom's been gone a really long time. And, and Jamie, her husband said, yeah, it's okay. He's with, you know, she's on a walk. And he was like, no, no, no. Like a really long time. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. You know, Laura, I really wish to have the sky is limit to our conversation, but time is a limit. So let's jump to the rapid fire questions. Okay. France or the U.S.? France or the U.S.? Um, ooh. It, it's going to depend who wins the election. 
and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Got it. Uh, Pilates or strolling with friends? Oh, friends. It's strolling with friends. What are your favorite color and song? Color? Okay, my kids laugh, but it's white. Um, and, and my favorite song, I knew you were going to ask this. I, I, don't, I don't have a favorite song. I just something happy and perky. What song was on your mind for the last week? For today's morning? No, so I don't, <laughs> you would have to play. I don't even know. I'm so sorry. I, I'm not good at that. Songs. If you were a superhero, what superpower would you have? Um, it would be the meals would magically appear in my kitchen. That <laughs> everyone would love them. And then they would magically be cleaned up. <laughs> yeah, that's an amazing superpower, I would say. Yeah, it would just be like, everyone's got the greatest meal. Everyone's happy with it. And voila, it's all cleaned up. Sounds pretty much catering, like catering. <laughs> <laughs> who do you learn from in the community world name just one person tatiana tatiana figueredo she's like i'm her biggest fan really i read everything she says i i love her approach to community and she's also the nicest human she's incredible and name two people who i should definitely reach out and have this conversation with Hmm. I maybe mentioned Megan Allers. She is head of community for Marco Polo and has done such a wonderful job with her ambassador program and just kind of allowing community to build organically. I would hmm. highly recommend talking to her. And I'm trying to think of someone you haven't connected with. Well, maybe Christian Fleck, and then we could learn from him. <laughs> Yeah, He's why not? Slow down, but I don't know him, but I, I imagine he has an incredible story. Is there one question that I definitely should have asked you, but didn't? Mm. Oh, maybe asking about what I like to read. Mm, about those five books that you showed me before we started this conversation. So what do you like to read? Well, I kind of read everything. Um I read fiction at night, but during, in the morning, I love to read a chapter of, uh, I mean, I, these are my books. I pulled out just for now. Um, I'm reading all of these books. Um, but right now, the one I'm really into is David Brooks, how to know a person. It's like hot off the presses and I, I love books. So this is my favorite book about community, which is Unreasonable Hospitality. Uh, also just got this one. Haven't read it yet. This one's incredible. Scarcity Brain. And this one's also really good. This is Brian Lowry from Stanford who wrote Selfless, The Social Creation of You. And essentially, the premise here is that we are all the composite of the people in our world and that we don't exist as a person in isolation. We are we are who we are because of the people around us. So, fully agree, you know. And yeah. I feel like I have so many books to add to my uh, to read list. Okay, thank you very much for that. Got it. <laughs> Do you finish every book that you start? No, 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 I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that you don't want to finish a book? Well, um, I kind of think of books as like I have more of like a library mindset about books and mm -hmm. I read a bunch at a time and I go back and I look at them I read them enough to understand like the premise and to have a feeling for what's in the book and then I might pull it off the shelf just to read a chapter or if I'm looking for something um so yeah no I don't always read them cover to cover and I normally read about five at a time yeah, got it. I yes, th th that's exactly how it works, and I totally understand what you are talking about. And yeah, you know, Laura, thank you so much for this conversation. And I definitely knew that you have a lot of energy. I definitely knew that you're a great connector, 
I definitely knew that you are this person who really loves very much actions because like the previous call that we had, you you kind of created a plan for me to find sponsors for this podcast. And then now we even have a goal, what to do, what to kind of collect money to go on this all the US round trip to meet all those people we had conversations with and have like in-person conversation, which is like totally amazing. And, you know, is this ah, amazing person. And just having this conversation, I understood that you are really deep person in addition to that and that you have really deep feelings that sometimes not everyone can see behind your energy. But I understand that you have a lot of those feelings inside you. And yeah, it's it's such such a great conversation for me. And you made me feel you, your human part. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, Yuri. May I say one more thing? Sure. Okay. So friends, look at that tree beside Yuri. Put it up, please. Could you show us? <laughs> um, this tree does not have any ornaments or any light and this is in yuri's little boy's room <laughs> so community people we need to come together and we need to decorate this tree <laughs> so uh, i'm putting it out there for the world yuri you may have to share your address with us so we can send you some ornaments but um they may have so to fun. We're, we need to decorate this tree and then we want to see it <laughs> it's so fun but yeah it's a great idea yeah. Laura, thank John. you very much. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> and yeah, see you in the community world.